Love is in the air, and what better way to celebrate than a glass of bubbles? Champagne is a Valentine's Day staple, of course, usually pink, usually Lauren Perrier or Billy Card Salmon. But for those who are really trying to impress, what about something different? To help you with your day, I've chosen three wines for each occasion, lunch, a late afternoon aperitif, and an early evening drink. But first we need to find a suitable venue for our amorous liaison, and where better than the American bar in the Savoy Hotel. So it's lunchtime, and you've come to the American bar at the Savoy Hotel, and you're looking for an aperitif for you and your day. Well, what better than a glass of bubbles to give you that pre-lunch adrenaline rush? And for the first one, I thought we'd go with something quite off-piste, unusual, an English sparkling wine. Now, Night Ember is one of our best sparkling wines, and it's got a reputation to rival many of the, the best sparkling wines in the world. It also has a, quite a nice romantic story, and that it's produced down in Sussex, in the shadow of Night Timber Manor, which was the home of Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife. Now, if you look at it, it has this wonderful salmon sunset pink fill. But what's very good about it, on the nose, full of red currants, but it has this brisk, sort of this lovely acidity that runs through it. And that will both jolt you into life, what I hope will be a very romantic and enjoyable lunch. So it's late afternoon, and you're meeting your date for a quick drink after work. And you're both a little tired, and you need a little bit of a sugar rush, just to calm you down and give you a lift for the evening. Now, for this choice, I've gone for Prosecco, which is grown in the hills above the, probably the most romantic city on Earth, Venice. And what better one than the Bizol family? Now, the Bizol family can trace their lineage back to the mid-16th century, so they've been growing this wine for a good few years now. Um, what I love about Prosecco is it has this delicate, soft, demisex softness. On the nose, there's wonderful, sort of gentle aromas of elderflower, peaches, pear, a little bit of almonds. But it's not going to overwhelm the palate. And again, the sweetness just gives you that extra gentle lift. She's very good in the sort of late afternoon. And there's also a little r romantic story about this wine, because the grapes are produced on the Cartesa mountain. And if you walk to the very top, you can just make out the shimmer of the Venetian lagoon. The evening arrives, and you're really trying to impress. Now, I think on this occasion, only champagne will do. And what better way to show that you're really in with the new trends than the first new release from Bollinger for 30 years, the Bollinger Rosé. Now, as you probably know, Bollinger was made famous by Aunt Lily Bollinger, her of that quote. And the house is famous for its big, powerful, strong, yeasty champagnes. And this is no exception. And what it's going to do, it's going to fill your whole palate and fill the room with the buzz of its, of its smell. And it's, as you can see, that wonderful salmon colour. Immediately you get this enormous, yeasty kick buttery flavour. It's seduction in a glass. And wow, that really overwhelms. It has a real wow factor. One suspects Aunt Lily would approve. 